Hello everyone, welcome back to Homestuck. Uh, on the last episode, Kanaya killed Carcat. Look at the crime scene, he's dead! No, she just knocked him out, because he's gonna get himself killed in the battle or something. So I'm sure he's just gone for the rest of the comic now, I'm sure. <laughs> um, speaking of, if you're enjoying the comic, and you want to see these episodes a week early, we're getting pretty close to the end, um, then like and subscribe. Thumbs up. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah, Calliope's back, too. Oh, and Jaspro Sprite. Okay, hold on. I can do this. <laughs> I have to do Rose's voice, but with the Jaspers. Nope, that's Roxy. Rose's voice, but with just... oh, Jaspers. <laughs> Why can't I do it anymore? Oh, no. Whatever, I'll just do the, the meows, and it'll be fine. They're back. Meow. At, la at last, an end to this dreadful lull in our recent social patterns. Okay, there we go. That's pretty close. <laughs> what lull? You've been talking non-stop since you were created. <laughs> <laughs> You're spilling all my secrets. <laughs> you see, Roxy, I knew you would find her. Especially me. Not to boast, but my faith in your ability to retrieve the cherub wasn't just some saccharine friendly nonsense. It was for pretty much everyone else here. It was established in what is now a highly focused understanding of my aspect, as well as these radically magnified feline instincts. Meow. Yes, good point. It's true that feline instincts is no empirical way to contribute to one's prognosticative acuity, fair enough, but they really make it feel like my intuition is more credibility than it really deserves. And to the cat portion of my being, that is good enough. Holy shit, I am legitimately pleased with myself right now. Trills. <laughs> Like, thrrr. I don't know. Is this her, Roxy? Of course this is her. Hello, you beautiful creature. Oh. <laughs> paw, paw. Gasp, Roxy. She's a treasure. This skull, actually, absolutely exquisite. So smooth to the touch and full of luster. So macabre. So ex sublimely exsanguineous. <laughs> Smell. Quite the fetching artifact to keep propped up on such a smartly dressed pair of shoulders. Could you maybe stop <laughs> Could you maybe stop pawing at her? It's creepy. <laughs> the shoot's spectacular. Tea loot yourself, I gather. You have no idea what a burning desire I have to get hair on it, but don't worry, I won't. Oh my god, her eyes, perfect lash, like a priceless doll's. Tis a special friend you pulled from the dead, Roxy. Thank you for sharing this gift with us. Brrr. Chirp. <laughs> ha. You there, John's hot mom. It wasn't a Freudian slip that time. I said it deliberately. Meow. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> we phantasmal kitty folk don't have much use for disguising the thoughts we think to be true in our minds, nor do we bother to veil attraction to which we find sexually appealing. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> These ideas I'm having, they're so interesting. Whatever this frame of reference has been all my life, color me glad I'm dead. Wink, wonk. John's hot mom, did you know you killed me? No, not she girl cat, I mean. You were twice culpable in a way. <laughs> the girl, the cat, okay. The murder weapon was in your custody and bequeathed to you roundaboutedly by yourself as an aged ghostly grandwoman. The plummet of that gut-crushing tome was the last thing I ever witnessed. Of course, the old woman herself was murdered by the accursed thing too, so I could hardly blame her for pulling a few strings here and there that it might find another victim. When a bedeviled joke opus has taken away certain inv individuals, it can be difficult to wrest them away from its favor. Well, look at me boring you with all this elementary tome trivia. Everyone knows already. What is the kitten cor what is this, the kitten corner? <laughs> the fact that John's hot mom, one time you and your cornball book made a pussy pancake out of me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I suppose Roxy had a hand in it, too. Technically, though, it seems Mom had it in her blood to do well-intended harm to that poor critter I used to be. It's okay, though, because she makes up for it with the best funerals. Purr, they are a treat. Each of my halves received one. I remember you so clearly in that dessert. Desert. As the life drained away and I muddled through the shabby last words of a raffish amateur. I clearly remember in spite of what a hack-eyed showing it was that I still had the presence of mind to be overwhelmed by the sense for how much you cared that gives me such a warm emotion right now. It makes me want to poof with little friendliness. 
but these aren't the only memories of death I have, or the only memories of life I have, for you see I've had many. Squaring these sprites, it is a marvelous thing. It opens you up. The shelves become curiously multidimensional and concentrated. I recall the lives of many Rose Lost, and many Jaspers, maybe even more than nine. Wonk! <laughs> Not that any of them matter now, they each chase their own laser pointers to their respective futilities, and now I am all that's left of them. Brrr. Nor does it matter to the task at hand for which we must prepare, does it, Hot Mom Crocker? What? For the battle ahead. We're still on healing duty, didn't anyone tell you yet? N no The game plan is simple. You jumpstart the cadavers while I scoot you around. How's that start sound, cookie tits? <laughs> Doesn't it tickle your toe beans? Meow. <laughs> well, that settles that. Maybe plan of action secured. Maybe it's time for you to go away now. It may very well be. Farewell, transistorily. <laughs> okay. Purr. I don't know how to do a chirp, but... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> shout <-ball. laughs> Hello, Kanaya. Funny meeting you down here in this cave. That is to say, the place I knew you went to, and skittered here to visit in order to find you. <laughs> Rose? Dear God, what happened? What hasn't happened? Meow. We've been through a lot, haven't we? All of us. Reality itself, really. Reality has been through so much and put us puts people through so much simultaneously. Like the two of us. Reality has put one version or another of you through so many things with one version or another of me. It's, it'd all be so sweet and stupid and silly and sad, hasn't it? You'd agree if you could remember. But after I watched your molecules come apart as I lay there dying in the great big neon sky litter box, there was one thing that occurred to me that I never got the chance to say to you. <laughs> Nuzzle. Okay, bye. <laughs> that, that was it? It was Nuzzle? Okay. Stephen Dark, surely this is where the party's at. Couple of cool cucumbers like you. See, Dirk knows what's up. What's with the party pants? I call them the catch pajamas if that phrase didn't literally describe my ensemble. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Yeep, feels like someone just dunked me in a chili tub. Earth to Strider Bros, does it look like I'm in the mood for a fucking bath? So, this is it. The big reunion comes down to this, then. A lot of awkward sitting around. Well, <laughs> sitting. <laughs> well, we all gaze at my father's pretty, pretty legs. <laughs> Boring. I'm a sprite to the second power, yet what do I find sitting here in this ancient skyscraper? None other than the true squares of the party. Lonk, meow. Bye-bye. Pounce. <laughs> Surprise, Jade's unintelligent father, and greetings. For it is I, a new brand, a brand new entity for which you are not familiar. And that bull troll sprite, I guess. Oh, hey, the last unprototyped kernel. That's such a tantalizing tidbit worth acknowledging if I ever ogled one. Like a stray toy some idiot chased under the fridge. <laughs> okay. Um. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, looks like you're both really boring too. Sorry to barge in on your weak times. Sniff you later. Meow meow. What? <laughs> no, it just immediately goes back to the pillow. So it just occurred to me. No. I saw a green goat, a spare green sprite, and it is like this little blinking light on those Ghostbuster traps, reminding me I saw of the empty vessel of, in need of a lost soul. What? Wait, no, time out! Ridiculous cat, Rose! I have stood by silently agog at your shenanigans, but I can't let that flagrant piece of misinformation go unchallenged. Brrr. That's not how the ghost traps work. The light blinks after they catch a ghost. Oh, really? Yeah, I just wanted to clear that up before you carry on with more of your silly nonsense. Anyway, please continue. <laughs> Thanks, Professor Nerd. I'm feeling a lot more knowledgeable about a fake thing now. Now about that sprite, which of your friend, which of you here was concerned with the resurrection of fallen friends? <laughs> was it you? It was you, wasn't it? Huh? Regardless, you're the only one left on this lily pad with any vested interest in whatever deceased member of that particular legume exhibit gets to rejoin us. And if that 
If my tally is correct, that's four Toro torsos, but only one colonel. Friska said that the colonel was supposed to be for our potential resurrection purposes. <laughs> oh, that's Rose, okay. Friska said that the colonel was supposed to be for our potential resurrection purposes. And so was yours. Friska? Who's this now? Hmm, no. Can't say the name clinks a water bowl. In fact, it sounds very suspiciously like the name of someone who probably scampered off, leaving exactly this kind of moral dilemma to those of us who stayed put. So who's it going to be, hmm? Well, a princely young wizard who wrought science through a wand, or a fishy young princess who never spoke once to Lalonde. What about other guy, the one thought half-dead only, or the girl who liked ships because they made her less lonely? Well, wonk. Meowsers, what a mystery. <laughs> nice, uh, oh god. <laughs> nice rhyme, uh, Jess, bro, Sprite. Uh, see, prose. It was, it was intentional. <laughs> but seriously, that's all from me tonight, folks. I've sincerely enjoyed hogging all your attention, and you've been wonderful. Thrills into the night. He just disappears. Yeah, she's just gonna bring Nabata back, isn't she? <laughs> oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> Wow, 10 path options. Wait a minute, you click and click, but nothing happens. This path section selection screen seems to be broken. Looks like Free Will got greedy and overloaded the thing with choice, running the graphic up there completely useless. Except you guess is a cooler, cool rollover thingy. For the first time ever in the over 9,000 page history of this website, uh, I don't think so. Uh, some of the pages got condensed, I think, <laughs> in the, um, what is it called? The most recent version, anyway. Um, and some of them I don't think have concrete page numbers anymore. Like the ones where you go back <laughs> and you do like extra stuff. I don't know. Anyway, I, when I was looking up how many pages this was, cause I wanted to, you know, kind of know how close I was getting to the end. Right. People were like, it's over 10,000 pages, but like, obviously the actual website says it's 8,100 and something. So <laughs> I was like, Hmm. But anyway. You begin to feel slightly deceived. Oh, how you would have loved to taste the fruit of free will one last time before this wild ride jerks our bodies to a deadly stop. Alas, it is not to be. You must proceed through all of these options linearly, one by one. You click the link below, as usual. Oh. So we're starting with... Okay, there's there's only ten. It's just... Okay. So we've got Dirk and Dave. We've got everybody on the circle. Vriska and Mina... Okay, Roxy and Calliope, Terezi, Rose, John, Jane, that's an interesting combination, just Roxy, Jasper Sprite, <laughs> Jaspro Sprite, rather, and uh, Jane, and then Roxy and Calliope again, <laughs> and Dirk and Dave again, and then Roxy and Kanaya. Okay, so Dirk and Dave, finally... So, uh, that was pretty fucking weird, huh? Yeah. That was, uh, that was your sister? Uh, sorta. But I guess she fused with her dead cat or something. Dead cat. The bottom line is, we turned our back for two seconds and a shenanigan happened. Pretty much business as usual. At least that's how it rolls for us. I don't know about you guys here. <laughs> no, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much true here, too. Yeah? Turn my back once, never again. What happened? A muscular troll took my sprite, and then it acquiesced into merging it with my jackass pair of sunglasses. <laughs> oh right, that guy. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> We're looking. <laughs> it's just awkward. So. So. So indeed. So this is pretty much, uh... <laughs> All right, wrong, wrong. <laughs> so this is pretty much the thing we're saying. That's uh, our conjunction of choice, it seems. <laughs> Fuck. I guess you all pretty much showed up then. Yeah, pretty much. Like, before I even got back. After the werewolf girl appeared and... Wait, what happened with that? It's like a whole story, man. Mostly involving Vriska. Vriska? If you knew her, you'd know that's all I had to say. You'd be like, oh, it's Vriska thing. Okay, forget it, I asked. <laughs> she brought you here too, actually. Then jumped her ass into that window to go wherever the crazy bullshit she thinks she needs getting done. 
Oh, right, her. Then, uh, I guess, uh, stuff in this session is pretty much sorted out, finally. Uh, maybe. And we're about to do battle. Seems like it. Oh. Are we ready for that? Kind of. Cubcat made some drawings, so... Are you ready? I guess. I got, like, a sword and shit. Cool, me too. Yeah, I know. Mine's not that good. That's too bad. What type of sword? It's Welsh. I mean, prob prob probably fake Welsh. I'm not that sure. Huh. Well, mine's good. I know. It's Japanese. <laughs> For real? No, I don't know. Probably fake Japanese. Fake Japanese. Kind of like uh, how all anime probably takes place in some kind of fake Jap Japanese universe. <laughs> Something like that. That's cool. Tough getting a sword from a place like that. Yeah. <sighs> so, when are we supposed to fight? God, I hope soon. <laughs> okay, cool. Everybody's back. Okay, um, now that that, uh, that episode seems to be over. Roxy, maybe you can introduce us to your friend for real this time? Rose, I think you can come out from under the pillow now. No. <laughs> yeah, um, so like the hilarious Cheshire Cat Rose already pointed out, that this is my friend fr Oh god, don't do the cat thing. This is my friend from the dead cow- From the dead Callie. <laughs> what? Friend from the dead- Oh, this is my friend from the dead, comma, Callie. <laughs> okay. And she's super pretty. Woohoo. <laughs> she was my web friend on Lines for a long time, and Jane's too. Jane, you just saw her, but she's here alive again and everything. Hi, uh, so good to see you again. Yes, likewise, Jane. And without your troll Sona, no less. This is your true form, I presume. Hmm. I think both Roxy and the enthusiastic cat girl are correct. Your natural appearance is quite handsome. Gosh, I am sorry. I do not know how to reply to such remarks. Maybe it is because I can't bring myself to agree, no matter how much it is nice it is for you to say so. I hear ya. Taking compliments can be kind of hard sometimes. Like if it's a weird subject for you, we can lay off. Kelly, you are surrounded by ass kissers. You should allow me to lick your face so I can make an objective determination. <laughs> Damn it, Terezi! It's the only way we'll know for sure. Though if I'm being honest, you smell pretty ugly from where I'm standing. Oh my god, you are so terrible. <laughs> Please, John. I did not mean that in an unflattering way. I think having a skull for a head is pretty sick. If given the choice, I might rock the look myself. But I wouldn't stand for a bunch of cloying weenies sitting around calling me pretty. If that's how people reacted, what would even be the point of looking like a badass skull girl in the first place? Okay, that's your opinion on that then. Thanks for sharing, Terezi. Don't listen to her, Callie. She's a weirdo. <laughs> so anyway, regardless of how you feel about yourself, or whatever thing a rude troll might have to say, I think you're very cute. Even though you look a lot like your terrible brother, the fact that you're nice inside makes a huge difference. I think that when you're a really good person deep down instead of an evil jerk, the skull monster look becomes a lot more charming. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, you met my brother. Yeah, he's garbage. I'm really sorry you had to grow up with him. Me too. <laughs> I roughed him up a bit, though, so it's all good. Ripped up his cape pretty good, too. He has a cape now. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, there it is. <laughs> nice. What? The ring. I helped track it down through time for Roxy so she could give it to you. It's so cool to see that it actually works. Yes, I feel much more. Substantial now. You must be a really good friend to her for her to want to bring you back so much. Yes, she is as good a friend as I could ever hope for. But then, since you helped, I suppose I owe you just as much gratitude, don't I? Nah, not really. I had to save the ring anyway, and it just seemed like the right thing to do, giving it to her since she was so worried about you. It should be a nice thing that is between her and you. I'm just the middleman. Hehe, <laughs> he, okay. Anyway, it's really nice to meet the person who finally gets to wear the high-touted ghost ring. It probably means you're pretty special to end up with it. What do you think you'll do with the rest of your life, now that you're alive and free from that jerky bro? Ooh, uh, wow. I had not even thought about it. The idea is overwhelming, really. Eh, don't sweat it. You'll have lots of time to figure it out. That's kind of the point of life, right? 
you take a lot of time floundering around figuring stuff out. The answer will come to you eventually. You should just try to have fun. Yo, Troll Grouch, John is so nice. Ah, oh, it's fucking me up. I know, it's disgusting. Excuse me, Callie. What happened after I woke up? We were all following that mysterious path. Did you and Jade discover where that led? Yes, I met my other self. Ah, oh, so you found her then? Indeed, or more likely, the timing in the furthest ring was right. Perhaps she sensed me in some way and untangled a path through the darkness. In other words, it feels more as though I was summoned rather than being the one to find her. She seems so tremendously powerful. She is also quite frightening. Frightening? Not that I think she is dangerous or has any ill intent. My impression was very much to the contrary. Still, while speaking to her, I can't remember ever feeling so nervous. Not even my brother made me feel that way. Her demeanor was so severe and chilling, and so unlike mine, I think. Maybe that's why you felt weird. Like seeing a version of yourself that wasn't like you at all. Maybe. So, what happened? Not much. My presence there essentially freed her from that place, according to a pact she made with Echidna. She and Jade then left, to do what I do not know. That is, when Roxy found me. So, are you, you were only there to release her? Are you sure there isn't something important for you to do, now that you're alive and with us? I doubt it. For one thing, I have virtually no useful abilities. I don't mean to badger you. I'm just wondering how you'll fit into all of this. Getting to wear a one-of-a-kind ring and returning to join a group of... to wage a pivotal battle. Strikes me as the profile of someone meant to do something important. What do you think you'll do? Maybe it doesn't have to work that way, though. What if those are just some facts about her which let her come back to life, but they don't have to mean anything other than that? Like anything about having to do some huge fancy thing. I guess so. First Dave tells me human beings don't have arcs, and now you're telling me the culmination of an epic doesn't require a messianic archetype to return from the dead, thereby providing the key to everyone's salvation. I wonder what sturdy and time-tested narrative construct Jade is going to debunk whenever she wakes up. <laughs> Maybe she'll lay waste to the notion of endgame ships. Karkai won't be happy about that. <laughs> yeah? Okay, I don't know what stuff you're going on about there, but I just don't think she would want to feel like she has to do anything she doesn't want to. The truth is, I won't be doing much of anything. My other self told me just as much. Her advice was just to live and... Exist as the version of us for whom that is an actual possibility. She's the one who will be doing important things. How so? She did not say. Isn't that just how it always is with alt selves? So cryptic. Hey guys, it's been cool having you all meet Callie and stuff, but do you think she and I could have a moment alone? Got some stuff I uh, need to talk about. <laughs> okay. Except now we're going to Vriska and Mina. This might be the last time I ever see Mina. So, here we go. No, <laughs> oh, no. It's it's Fishka. <laughs> Vriska, okay. Oh, and now it's Vriska parentheses, so we know the difference. You know, I've got to say, I've really turned around on horses. What? Horses. I used to hate them, remember? I developed this weird superstition about them, about how they're cursed or something, and when they're around, they can only lead to bad things happening. Don't you remember how I was going on and on about it that, while, that a while ago at the amusement park? Uh, I guess so. But we've been hanging around them for a while now, and everything's been fine. <laughs> More than fine, actually. So yeah, horses are okay in my book. What do you think, Mina? About what? Horses. Uh, they're okay. Kind of dumb and smelly. Be making like fucked up sounds with their big ass snouts and floppy lips. Yeah, reminds me of the weird sounds that used to come from my neighbor's hive at weird hours of the night. The fuck? Don't even ask, because I don't know. <laughs> Scoot. So, enough about stupid animals. Whose presents have no rational explanation anyway? What do you want to do today? Today? Yeah. There is no today. You know what I mean. Within the ambiguous time frame that would loosely cor correlate with a single rotation of a planet. Any ideas? Nah. No. Come on! We can't just spend all our days hanging out in this idyllic, bizarrely palleted cliffscape with all these stinking idiot quadrupeds. We should go exploring some more bubbles. We explored an awful lot already. Ain't they sort of all the same by now? 
I mean, roughly speaking, yeah. They're all arbitrary memory collages, I guess. But there's always something new to see every time. Whose ridiculous memory will we visit next? Like some nutty version of Kanaya who became a god tier and some totally ludicrous version of our session. Or maybe a version of John who never played the game at all. Maybe he went outside to look for the game and his fatherly Lucis backed him over with his car. <laughs> What about your friends? They're always fun. Like Nepeta's ancestor, the deaf one. She's a riot. Plus she has a fascinatingly dark history with which her memories always seem to hint at. Or Eridan's douchier clone. I know you have a great time whenever you get the chance to own him. So what do you say? Uh, I don't know. But you seem kind of bored. If you're bored, doesn't it make sense to try to get out and have some fun? Not really. But why? Because it just doesn't sound like fun. just sounds like the same, same shit as always. Like, exactly like dreams. Dreams? They are dream bubbles, after all. Yeah, but I don't. Dreams are also a crazy fantasy ride full of fake shit that makes no sense. It's a great time in theory, and I guess when you're younger it's fun. Maybe even look forward to sleeping, to see what gr the great Mr. Sandclam has in store for you next. But after sweeps and sweeps a dream and you just get used to it. It's just the same bogus crap your stupid brain is just shuffling up and serving you again and again. So you'll stop paying attention and just ride out your sleep. Then get back to business in the real world like a legit person with cool plans. Huh. I don't think I've had the same experience, honestly. Sounds like kind of a bummer to look at dreaming that way. I always liked dreaming. I mean, unless they were awful dreams, which was fairly often. But I never say I really got bored of them. Yeah, well, uh, you are a bit younger than me. I am? Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Never really thought about it. Then again, we fuchsia ladies, we sort of get have to get used to being around people younger than us for over our full lives. Like, much younger. <laughs> or at least I'd have to if I was actually alive. I guess you're right about that, too. That's pretty fucked up to think about, actually. That if you were alive, you'd have to deal with existing nearly forever. Almost as fucked up as the fact you have to exist nearly forever while dead, too. Hmm. Hey. Are you okay? Yup. You seem really down. No, I'm cool. You sure? Uh, maybe not. Don't matter. What's wrong? Nothing. Ah, you know you can talk to me, right? Yeah. So tell me. I don't know what's wrong. I'd tell you if I knew. Are you depressed? <sighs> Sounds to me like you may be depressed about something. Or just in general. I don't know. Damn, Fishka. <laughs> Hey, it's okay to be depressed. I think just because you're dead, that doesn't necessarily let you off the hook from having psychological problems. I'm pretty sure I proved that myself on more than one occasion already, wonk. Yeah. So talk to me. Maybe I can help. Yurg. <laughs> Yurg. What's the big deal? I don't wanna... <sighs> Mina. What? I'm not good at, like... Talking about me. But that's all you ever talk about. No, I mean, uh, in a non-aggrandizing way. Oh. <coughs> Sorry if I'm interrupting. Whatever the fuck is going on here. But I'm afraid I'm going to need that treasure. <laughs> okay. Well, it's kind of a weird place to end, but it feels like, uh, an ending. Anyway. So, yeah. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a little weird. <laughs> but hey, Callie got to meet everybody. Honestly, I mean, I knew it was going to happen, that Callie was going to get the ring and come back. But I didn't think she was going to do it before the end. You know what I mean? <laughs> I thought they were going to fight the big epic battle and then she'd get to come back. Or like, they'd bring her back at like a critical moment. But no, she's just kind of back. And now everybody's getting to meet her in the story. It's a bit uh, odd. Because <laughs> now I, I have to consider what the hell is she going to do in the end game. Um, she is the major difference in this timeline, aside from Vriska being alive, though. Because obviously Arania got the ring in the last timeline. So maybe that'll cause something different to happen and that'll help. I don't know. Um, Jaspro's sprite. 
kind of a weird thing to throw in right at the end here. I guess that's technically one of the characters I hadn't met yet, and the reason why I couldn't just go to a full tier list yet. And the same with uh, uh, Calliope Alpha, or whatever. The <laughs> epic Calliope who's going to do something. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's interesting. Anyway. I kind of thought Vriska was going to, like, kill Fishka. <laughs> like, I know you can't literally do that because they're already in the dead space. But I thought she was going to, like, throw a... Like, a trident through her or something. And she'd, like, poof back to her original dream and have to find Mina again or something. I'm kind of... Wondering... If maybe... This is going to lead to Mina coming back somehow. We'll see. Because <laughs> she was kind of a main character for a decent amount of the plot, so... You would think she'd stick around. Seems how Arania has been essentially written out of the story because she got killed. <laughs> but I still do think Arania has one of the most satisfying arcs in the story because of that. <laughs> it's like, uh... It's kind of like superhero comics, honestly. Where... Because they go, it goes on for so long, Homestuck, you constantly have to invent new problems for the characters to go through so they continue can continue to grow, right? And some of them are going to be popular and some of them are going to be less popular. So if you just have a character who sticks around for a little bit and goes through one good arc, they're going to stand a, out above the rest, right? Um, who have multiple arcs, but some of them are less good than others. It's like comparing, like, <laughs> well, this, is a, this is an example nobody's going to understand. Um, but in Marvel Comics, there's a character called the Sentry, okay? And he's basically like a Superman with amnesia. So he did a bunch of superhero stuff way back in the day and then forgot about it. And now he's, like, coming back is the whole point of the story. And the whole story is about, like, unpacking why he has that amnesia and why coming back might not have been the best thing even though you know he's doing good stuff right and it was like pretty popular and well received <laughs> it's like the next but then of course because he became a fairly popular character they kept bringing him back and doing more stories with him but he was only ever planned to have that one story and I like that story. I think it's pretty good. But the stuff they do after that is just like, oh, and now we're doing it again, but a little different. And so those suck. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's my TED Talk, I guess, on why Arania is an awesome character. And uh, Fishka is not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm just glad we have normal Vriska back is all I'm saying. Even though people have brought up in the comments that it doesn't make any sense that Fishka still exists. Honestly, I think that would have been a way better moment. Is for, like, them to be chilling out in the dream bubbles. And then Fishka just stops existing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we could have a whole, like, different arc where Mina actually gathers an army of ghosts. Uh, <laughs> like, militantly in this version of the timeline. Um, and he's, like, a totally different person. And that could be interesting, too. But honestly, I kind of like Mina where she's at right now. I just don't like Vriska where she's at with Mina. I'm also sad that Mina and Vr they don't seem to be happy together. I mean, it feels like Mina's maybe just in a slump about not being relevant anymore. Um, but, you know, it'd be kind of nice if we were going to write them out of the story if they just got to have a happy ending, at least. Which is why I think we're bringing Mina back. That's basically what I'm saying. Um, question of the video? I got nothing. <laughs> um, oh, boy. I mean, I've done this before. But there's more characters that you can talk about now since the last time I've done it. So I'll do it again. If you could arrange... <laughs> Let's just... Okay. Seems how we were mostly focused on the beta kids last time we did this. And like the alpha trolls or whatever. However that works out. The regular cast of characters, not the new ones we were introduced to in Act 6. Which Act 6 pair of two characters 
would you pair for a conversation if you had the opportunity? <laughs> so that's the Alpha Kids, the uh, Ancestors, I guess, as well as like Calliope, Caliborn, um, Arqueus. We can count Arqueus. He's basically like a new character. <laughs> I guess Jaspros is technically too, but it feels more like Hyper Rose than anything. Um, is there anybody else? <laughs> I guess you could technically include uh, Union Jack or whatever. <laughs> the the Caliborn version of Jack from this universe. Anybody from this universe is basically what I'm saying. Which two characters would you have talk to each other? Honestly, uh, <laughs> I probably would have said Jake and somebody if Jake didn't have Tavros to talk to you now, because I feel like that actually is a fairly good dynamic that they have. Um, I mean, it's mostly comedic, but at least they still can understand where each other are coming from, you know? Um, so I might have to go with, like, Jane and somebody to have more time talking with each other. But the problem is there's, like, nobody good who I would... <laughs> like, Jane needs, like, some character exploration, right? So you'd want to pair her with somebody. You know, it would have to be one of the troll ancestors, probably. Um... Because, as much as I don't care for them. Honestly, Mina would be interesting. It would be interesting to, you know, dive into Jane actually getting to meet the Batter Witch, sort of. That would be something. Um, yeah, because she already talked to Caliborn and they... Like, I don't need more of that. <laughs> and she's going to talk to Callie now. And she's talked to Callie in the past as well. Um... Obviously, Dirk and Roxy and Jake she's talked to. So yeah, I think it has to be uh, a troll ancestor. And I think that Mina might be the most interesting one. The other one that comes to mind is maybe Porim. <laughs> it seems like they would have an interesting dynamic. But um, I'm just going to go with Mina. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching again. And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.